Hello and welcome to the Next.js GraphQL implementation of the e-commerce store. This is part one. So before you invest your time in this tutorial, I want to explain what's going on here. So if you haven't already seen on the channel, we're running and we've started building a Next DRF, so Django REST framework build of an e-commerce store. This tutorial is building on top of this tutorial and is essentially converting, it's removing the Django REST framework and we're going to be implementing GraphQL. So if you want to learn how to build um, from scratch up until where we are now in this tutorial, then go ahead and have a look at that tutorial first. That'll take you through the steps of actually building all the pages and explaining how Next.js works in, in general up until the point where we are now in this tutorial. And then in this tutorial, we're going to basically start now converting this application that we built already into uh, Next.js with GraphQL and Django. So I am assuming that you have absolutely no knowledge of GraphQL at all. So we're going to start from scratch, um, assuming that you've never utilized GraphQL before. So like I said, we are building an e-commerce store. We are here in part one. So I will be starting from the code that we finished off with in the video series that I've just mentioned. So we'll start there, we'll strip out all of the Django DRF and then we'll start to include um, our GraphQL. So we'll start from scratch. We'll build up slowly uh, with some simple queries and as we go along the series and build in the store, we'll then move into more complex uh, patterns and principles and methods of working with GraphQL. So just to clarify then, we're building an e-commerce store um, we're going to be utilizing Next.js and Material UI for the front end. Uh, this is going to be with Django and we're going to be implementing GraphQL in Django and Next.js. So if you haven't seen the introduction from the previous series that we're working from and you simply just want to learn GraphQL, for example, um, and implementing it within a, a project, we are following a five part series. So in this tutorial, we're going to be implementing a catalog system, just a kind of skeleton catalog system, which we'll work and build upon as we go through the series. And then in part two, uh, we'll then have a look at implementing a basket system. And then part three, uh, user accounts and user authentication and so on. And then in part four, we're moving to payments, so taking payments in our e-commerce store. And then think about in part five, kind of order management. So at that point, we we'll take suggestions from the community and then look at how to potentially and just Im improve the code base in general. So just before we get started, the workflow, we're going to download and set up Next.js and Django that we've already pre-created in the previous tutorial I mentioned. And then we're going to install and set up GraphQL on Django so that we can make the data available to the front end. Then next up, we go into Next.js install Apollo, that's going to give us the interface so that we can capture an interface with our GraphQL backend, our Django GraphQL backend. And then we just go through each page in Next that we developed previously, look at how we can then implement that from Django DRF to GraphQL. So that's going to take us through a path where we collect all data from the database or products. And then we'll have a look at kind of dynamic pages and utilizing variables within our queries on the front end to collect data from our GraphQL Django backend. So to start off then, there's a few ways we can collect the or find the code for this tutorial. Um, it will be in the description, so you'll be able to download this starter code, but else just to kind of point out the fact that we are working from this e-commerce store one, the next DRF build. So you will also find a link here in the in the bottom here um, where you'll be able to download this code this repository so this will take you to github if you're not familiar with this and then from here you'll find a folder inside of this folder is the django and next code so what we need to do is just download that unless you already know how to set this up you can just um, pull this down so let's just download this so once you've downloaded just go ahead and extract so you'll be presented with the folder here. So I do recommend 
and just take in these folders and just move them over here to the root directory um, else you're going to end up in the in the command prompt or the terminal with a, a long folder structure so it's better to work with a kind of a smaller folder structure so we've got the next core and the Django project right here so let's open this up with Visual Studio Code and get it working so just for anyone who's new to working with Django um, so you're going to need to make sure that Python is installed so my command prompt, command prompt here um, if I just type in see that if you just type in Python uh, dash dash version oh. Uh, so I've got Python 3.9 here installed. So just go ahead and install Python. Go to the Python website, download, install, and you'll be good to go there. So uh, so first thing we need to do then is just open up our project. So that was on my this desktop here, I think in a folder here. So Django. Uh, so open that folder up. We're going to need to make a virtual environment. So that's always ideal. So py manage m. Okay, so we're going to make a virtual environment. So we make a new folder here. It might take a few seconds on yours to build this. And I'm just going to go into my virtual environment. Oh. Uh, oh, excuse me. There we go. So we've started a virtual environment. So it says VMV here, which indicates that I'm in my virtual environment. Now I've got a requirements file here, so I just need to run that. So I'm going to pip install minus R, then requirements text. So that's going to install all the dependencies for this project that we've already pre-built. Remember, if you're not too sure what's going on here, just head over to the website uh, and just check out the Next.js part one, Next D, Next.js DRF build e-commerce part one, where I'll take you through how to set this up. Right, so now that's installed, uh, we should now go, be able to go ahead and py manage py and then run server. So that server should run OK. And then you can check out the server by typing in 127.001.8000. And that's what you should be presented with. Remember, this is just an API. So there is no front end here on Django. You can see that we've got uh, different links here to. This is actually wrong. Uh, I've got a different version running. I think that's the problem at the moment. Bear with me a second. I think I've got another implementation of Django running. Here we go. Uh, so that's what you should see. Admin API. So you can see we've got a lot of API stuff here. So you're not going to see anything else on this front end. So you can still go into the admin area. So the username and password is admin and admin. And then you can see I've got some products already created. And you can go ahead and change some of these. So if you want to add some products, remember we start from categories. You need to add some categories. Go ahead and add uh, product types and then products. So again, if you're not familiar, I take you through this and I'll keep repeating myself. I will take you, I've taken you through this already in this tutorial here. So if, again, if you want to learn more about that, just go ahead and watch that first and then come back. Right. So that's uh, Django set up. So let's go ahead now and set up Next.js. So I've opened up a new window in Visual Studio Code. We're now going to do pretty much the same thing again. So I need to just go into my desktop. Um, I'm going to need to select my folder and then next. And I'm going to the core. OK, so select that folder there. So again, this is already pre-built for us. Uh, so all we need to do at this point is run a few commands. So first we need to install the dependency, so npm install so that's going to basically have a look at the packages that are needed to run this project and then basically install them so once that's done we can just npm uh, run dev that will then start the server now it looks like we've got a little error here so my problem was I already had another instance running so it wouldn't start so I basically typed in next run dev again and it's all okay now so nothing happening there that needs fixing so let's now go back into the application so you're going to find that you're going to need to go to your local host and 3000 to start this so that's the 
the next implementation. So you can see that everything is working okay. So this is the shop here, or the, the front end of the shop. We've got some basic products. If we click on the products. So this image just needs scaling. Um, it should be a little bit bigger. Some of these images are probably scaled up like this one. So the only difference there is that this image is slightly bigger. So um, you can see on the left hand side, we have uh, multiple images that will appear for the product. And then the main image, and then the title and the price. So we can then also use the category system that's also been developed. So for different categories, we can display different products. So I don't think there's any clothes products yet. So just shoes. So that's pretty much all we've built in the first tutorial with uh, DRF. So we're now going to convert this over to GraphQL. So the reason to work this way, why have I not gone through the whole process again is I wanted to showcase really the fact that you can work with Django DRF and GraphQL at the same time. And also it gives us a, a little bit of a contrast here. We can see the differences between Graph and Django DRF and why we might want to convert over. Of course, both of these technologies um, will live happily together um, and potentially they offer the same type of tools and facilities um, as each other. So one of the benefits potentially of using Graph is that there's only really one entry point into the server. So with Django DRF, potentially we're describing multiple paths into the system. So these are all kind of data endpoints here for different types of data. Now with GraphQL, you'll see shortly, we only really have one path or one entry into the API, um, which can mean we've got less room for mistakes potentially um, we've got less to well, not less less to secure but potentially we've got one entry point to secure which can potentially for security make it easy uh, for us to maintain and secure the software so we're not going to go ahead and uninstall drf here we're going to work and uh, with both of them at the same time potentially we can remove them later on because we're not actually going to need drf and graphql at the same time but we're just going to leave it for now and we're going to get started. So this is where we can start with Graph. In order for us, for Django to work with Graph, uh, we're going to pip install Graphing Django. So Graphing Python is a library that allows us to work with GraphQL in our Python environment. So if you don't know anything about GraphQL, so GraphQL is a data query language. So one of the main differences with working with GraphQL is that we use the query essentially on the front end. So with Django DRF, everything is done at the back end. Our query, so to speak, um, is organized and um, described in our views, for example. So here we describe what data it is we want to collect. We could add some filters here, for example, like we've done here. So we collect and organize our data. So with Django DRF, we send a signal to an endpoint and these endpoints then are connected to data points in our view and we collect certain data from each endpoint for example so if i wanted for example to collect the category data i would then point to this endpoint here uh, api slash category and that would then give me all the data about the category i would organize what data is collected here in this url based upon the view that i've set up and connected to that url of course, with Django DRF, we also have serializers, which uh, prepare the data ready for to, to send back uh, to the front end in a format that can be utilized and then displayed on the screen, for example. So that's the current setup with Django DRF. One of the biggest changes using GraphQL over Django DRF is that GraphQL, we create queries on the front end. So that gives us better control of what data we want to collect from our back end. So to give you an example here, if and when we're working with Django DRF, we create these endpoints. Just uh, speaking generally, we now have set out where all the data can be found. Now, for example, if we wanted to make a change, not only potentially we need to make a change on the front end, we need to make a change on the back end uh, to make a new um, point access point or an endpoint sorry for data and then we'd need to change the front end um, code as well to match so working with graphql potentially 
we can just set up the back end with one endpoint, set out um, all, the all the data that is available, and then we can just simply work from the front end. When we want to make changes to our data, we can just do that in the front end because we can just change the query on the front end instead of having to go to the back end, add or remove endpoints here and so on. So there are some benefits of uh, using Graph over Django and hopefully we'll see that as we go along. So before you ask me which is better, GraphQL or Django DRF, the answer to that is that they both technologies provide similar features and functions. Uh, they do that in, in different ways and they both have advantages and disadvantages. And it's really up to you to determine what those are and to try and match those to the projects that you're working with to determine which technology to choose. So you do have the option and what I'm showing you here of using both. So maybe you start with the tried and tested uh, DRF and then over time and where necessary or where needed or where suitable, you could potentially start utilizing GraphQL. Okay, so let's start off by installing Graph in our system. So uh, we're gonna install Graphene Django, so let's do that. Uh, so here we are in our, let's just sort this out. Here we are in Django, yep. Uh, so I'm just gonna stop the server, control C. Let's uh, pip install Gra Django. Okay, so once we've done that, uh, we need to probably put that into our installed app. So let's have a look. Um, so yep, we need to put that into our installed apps. That's next, always windows open. So let's go in now and do that. So that's going to be in our core settings. You're probably familiar already with this. I do apologize. So we'll save that there. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Um, at this point in terms of installing um, there's no need for us to migrate at this point so at this point we can just um, follow this so you can see here um, we potentially need to set up something called a schema so let's just go ahead now and just uh, put this schema in and set up a, a schema page so what we're going to do before I explain what schema is we we'll just go into settings at the bottom say we we'll just put this in and we we'll just make a, a small change here so this is essentially pointing to a file called schema. So our app is not called app, it's called store. So let's go in and in the store, we're gonna build a file called schema. Inside of that, we're going to have schema. And this is where Graph uh, can find the schema. So let's go ahead and in our store, we're just going to set up a new file called, would you believe it, schema. So that's now in our store. So now that's uh, nicely connected to our settings. And inside of here, we're going to set up our schema. So to summarize what a schema is, right? So here in Django DRF, we have our URLs, they're pointed to our views, and we have serializers to convert the data, say just generalizing it, converting the data and preparing it to be sent across to the front end. So our schema is basically a description of all of that. It will describe what data we want to include to be available from the front end. It's going to include all the queries and what is described as mutations. So if we want to add data to our database, mutations or changes um, that we want to build. So basically the schema describes all the data, the connections between the data, and then all the operations we can then perform on that data. So at least to begin with utilizing Graph, uh, with Django, you're going to have everything in this one file. Whereas with Django DRF, we set up our URLs, our views, and our serializers. With, with GraphQL, everything's going to be initially within this schema file. We are going to include a URL to point to our schema, but remember here with GraphQL, we're only going to be building one endpoint, and that's just going to be pointed to our schema, essentially. So let's just go ahead first and set out our URL. Now, like Django DRF, the API view, here in Graph, we also have a, a kind of a UI interface that we can utilize and prepare our, our queries, for example, or practice running our queries to test our system. So that's a really handy tool which we're going to use. Uh, so let's go ahead and just set up our URL. So we're going to do that in our core, in actual fact. 
So head over to the core settings or URL, sorry. So we're just going to bring in our the GraphQL view. And we're also going to use the CR, CSRF exempt. Um, so that is just going to, if we get to the point where we create mutations and send data across, we're just going to be utilizing CS, CSRF exempt. So we don't have to pass over our CSRF token. So once that's done, we can then create a new path. So we can decide what path or entry point we want into the system here by default. We're given this option of um, or we're utilizing GraphQL slash. So you can change that however you want. And then we're going to use the CSRF exempt to then essentially run this GraphQL as a view. And then we're going to set GraphQL graph IQL uh, to true. And that's the setting, um, if I remember correctly, that's going to set up the kind of the user interface or allow us access to the, the user interface so we can practice um, and run some queries. Right, so that's pretty much it there that we need to set up. Um, everything now is just, notice that we're not we're not actually connecting to our schema. We're not describing our schema here. What's happening is that in our settings, um, Gra Graphene is going to be looking for our schema just here to find the schema it wants to use. Remember the schema being with all our, where our data is described that we want to use and all of our queries, etc. So we can also set up our schema here or describe where to find our schema here if we want to. Um, it's totally up to you. You'll probably see if you've looked at other tutorials, you've probably seen um, someone or potentially this way where the schema is described in the URL instead of in the settings. Okay, so now we can go ahead and just close this down. Right, so we go back into the schema now. So this is a schema inside of our store and let's get going. So first of all, we need to import graphene. We're gonna, we're gonna need that. And then here with the graphing Django, we have special Django object type. So that's very specialized, obviously, for Django, Django object type. So we're going to make uh, objects, our graph objects. So here we're using graph technology. So I'm not going to go into graph technologies, what they mean, etc. But by all means, have a look at what's going on here, kind of the uh, the theory behind this. But we're going to basically now describe the data we want to um, use in our API and essentially in some respects build a graph so connected data um, in a space we, which we can then query so we use or we describe objects in our graph and we can do that through in this case the Django object type so let's just uh, bring in our models so we've got a few models here uh, we're going to import the let's just start off with product so that's our product model. If you're not too sure with the models, have a look at the previous tutorial, like I keep mentioning, apologies, or have a look at the model here for the different fields that are available. So what I need to do here then is set out a new class. Um, I'm gonna call this uh, product, uh, product type. And then I'm gonna bring in my Django object type. So that sets up the object. Uh, and now I'm going to use class meta. So I just need to describe the model that I want to use. Yep, uh, that that's the uh, product. Yep, God, had a brain freeze. That was my product. And then I just need to describe the field. So if we're coming from Django DRF, you can see this looks very familiar to building a serializer. There we go. So so let's uh, set up the fields and then um, we're going to need for example id uh, let's uh, bring in the title just trying to remember what fields we've got uh, the title and then i think we've got a description okay let's just do that for now so we've got our description every day so that's our that's our data wonderful so we've described what data is going to be available um, of course, there's more fields. We'll expand this as we go along. Right, so that's our, that's our objects we want to utilize and connect with in our graph, say. So now what we need is a query. So there's two separate components here. You've got the actual data you want to model, and then you've got the queries and mutations, etc., that you want to run. 
So let's go ahead and do that. So we build a new class called uh, query, say, and then we're going to bring in graphene dot uh, object type. Yep. Uh, so what we're going to do now then is basically we're going to point to our data so or to our our object so let's do all products oh, let's use some capitals here all products and then that equals graphene dot now we want to collect data in different ways and so here what we want to do is we want to collect this data in a list so we need to describe list to find it as a list say and then we basically then bring in our our object so what I've done here is I basically made a connection uh, in my query so these these are all my objects and I basically just this this scroll is not happening is it uh, I basically just now brought this object into my query so now I can go ahead and think about collecting data from it so let's go ahead and do that so we're just going to run what is essentially just a Django a query. That's pretty much all we're going to do here. So let's uh, create a new function. Um, we're going to call this resolve. So this is a resolve. So what's happening here, this keyword resolve, we're saying now that when we point our query to all products, for example, um, basically we need to resolve it. So what does this mean? So a resolve is basically a query that we want to run, an, an action that we want to take. So we're going to resolve. We're going to take an action. Now, what do we want to take an action on? Well, in this case, we want to take an action on all products. So once we've done that, we just need to then kind of bring in some resources. Now I'm going to skip this detail here. So we want to bring in root and info so let's just skip that for now those details so we just need to bring in root and info right so now we've got this in place uh, we can now uh, think about running a query so let's just go ahead and run a query so we just need to return a simple kind of uh, what's happening there uh, a simple return let's just sort out these spaces Okay, so let's just uh, return. And now we're just gonna run a query. So literally uh, it's gonna be product.objects.all, just a, a simple Django query. So there we go. So that's pretty much the, the setup that I'm gonna need. Describe the objects, and then bring the, the objects in, and then create a resolve. Um, so when I essentially run a query on all products, um, it's going to produce all the data. Now obviously in the front end I can now run a query and describe what data I want to collect. Now this is the difference. So with Django DRF we create our for example uh, our serializer and in our serializer we describe what data we want to return. Now we don't have a choice here we return all of that data potentially from our serializers. So here we've got a little bit more control in terms of what data is actually returned. So I'm just speaking generally here again. Uh, so although here I'm running a query, um, get all data, what I can still do is from the front end, run a query and only collect, for example, the title or only return the title or only collect the description, for example. So it does Graph is providing me a little bit more control potentially in what I want to collect and return to the front end but here because I've generalized and said I want to collect everything it does mean again I've got that control sometimes I want, might want to collect the title sometimes I might want to collect everything sometimes I might want to collect foreign key connections between this table and I can do that simply by describing just all here um, and that graph is now providing me through my queries that I'm going to now build that flexibility of collecting that individual data.
so let's go over to the front end and let's just run this so let's find that yep uh, so it was graph ql that was our endpoint so i don't think the server's turned on i do apologize yep so just make sure you're running your server of course now it looks like we've got a problem here actually um okay i've not finished this apologies i've i've skipped a, a step so i just need to connect this up now so i need to connect this query uh to my schema so it runs so when i say that again connect to my query to my schema so this is my schema i need to connect this now to a graph to make it available so these queries i need to make them actually available so that they can be um, queried upon so at the bottom here i'm just going to call this schema that equals uh, graphene dot schema so I'm basically just describing it as a schema and then I'm going to basically say that query equals query there we go so here then I'm basically saying that this is uh, my schema if I want to find any queries then you're going to find it here in queries this class called queries so that's where you're going to find my queries or, or that's where you what you can query these are all the uh, things that can be queried okay right so now we should be able to assuming yeah everything is working let's go back into the front end and just refresh so now you can see and um, welcome to graph iql so from here you can see that i can start to run queries so i've got a little bit of a history on the left hand side of all the queries that i've run so i can remove that i'll zoom out a little bit um you've got this option here prettifying things if you like um you can move and copy in history wonderful so this is how it's going to work so we're going to start off with a, a query so the wonderful thing about using graph iql it knows because what we're doing here is we're building again without trying to explain we're building a uh, imagine uh this is my apologies for this uh this is like the blueprint this is all the ta these are all the uh models that we're going to use so this is describing all the queries potentially we can run but this these are all the objects in my graph say so over here because we've now made that available uh, imagine essentially that graph has now been built and i can use that now or this tool can use this now to have a look at the graph so it knows potentially what i can type and what i can't type so this is a really handy tool so i've got a query and uh, this is the, the type of format i'm running here so we'll run with query first so we can give it a name just an arbitrary name whatever you like that is not a problem so we can we can we can name it there so now we're going to say basically what we want to make a query on so there's only one thing at the moment we can build a query on and that here is all products so let's go ahead and do that so all products there we go so i just type in a and you can see it all comes up for me so again i use my curly braces and now i just need to describe what data i want to return so data that i have available is id title and description so I can control what I want to return. So maybe I just want the ID. So I do that, press go, and you can see this is the data now I've uh, brought back to the front end. So this is the data that I've collected and now will be kind of collected from the front end so I can deal and work with that. So I can go ahead, so I don't need commas here. Uh, let's just go for title, I think it was. Yep, title, and there we go. So I can add some more data. I can control, for example, Right, in what order I want the data so just flip this around you can see it gets returned in that way although it doesn't really make any uh, difference um, to me uh, so I can control what I want to collect so let's just go in and do the uh, description as well so those are the three things I've described so far that I can collect and it's I want to say it's as simple as that this is how I'm going to collect data at least to begin with so let's just go ahead now and just uh, I'm going to include all the the fields I'm going to need here so that we can start building on the front end so these are just all the fields we're going to need and uh, we're going to need a slug just get rid of that for now uh, so ID title description regular price and slug so those are all the fields that I'm going to need to send across to my front end so let's now go over to the front end and have a look at how we can now implement it within next.js so in order for us to interface with our GraphQL backend, we're going to be utilizing Apollo inside of Next.js. Um, there aren't too many options available for this, and Apollo is 
an industry standard uh, GraphQL implementation according to apollograph.com. Uh, so let's go ahead and install this. So just following the Apollo docs, uh, so this is the apollograph.com docs and the React. Uh, so you can see here that we're going to npm install Apollo client GraphQL. So we copied that. Let's go into our into the right place. Let's just uh, install that. So let's start off by going into Pages API. I've removed the file that was in here already, and we're going to create a new file here, and I'm going to call that Apollo Client. Jets. There we go. And then in here, what I'm going to do is I'm just describing the endpoint. That's essentially what I'm doing. And I'm just going to set up the cache. There's just two settings. I'm not going to go in any detail with the cache. So we're just going to follow the, the set guidelines. So we're going to import the Apollo client and the M in memory cache or cache, depending on what part of the world and how you describe it. Okay, so that's all kind of set in there. So nothing amazing there. We need the Apollo client so we can start to kind of attach and collect data from the back end and the in memory cache. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to describe it just yet. We just need to bring it in to begin with. Okay, so now what we need to do is to build a client connection. So let's just uh, let's do this. So we're going to build a client connection. So we call this a uh, client or whatever you like. So that's going to be a new uh, Apollo connection. So what we're doing here is a uh, I don't want to make it sound obvious we're building a connection, but obviously Apollo provides us the the tools to to make the connection, to run a query or to send a query, to collect the data from the back end. So let's go ahead and we just need to describe two things. That's our endpoint. So let's remember that we've got an endpoint that's at 127 currently, 0.0.1, and with a port of 8,000. And then if you remember, we're using GraphQL endpoint. So we're gonna need a, a slash on that. So that's our endpoint. And remember, that's the same point we use to lies for. If we go back into our graph IQL, that's the same endpoint that we're using for that as well. Okay, so that's our endpoint in place. And now we can go ahead and just set up the, the cache. And then we cache. Right. And there we go. So last thing, obviously, we just need to export that. So we'll just make this available on our pages. So we're going to default client. So we're going to refer to that as client. So anytime we refer to client, um, that is just referring to essentially where the data endpoint is in our Django server. So that file is now completed, and we can now go in and start to work. So let's go into our index first. So just to remind you again, this index page is just a simple page producing all the products that are currently in the system, it's this page here. So what we want to do now is strip out all the DRF and now run the same thing, but with GraphQL. Now we already have our endpoint, remember, because we've created that all products. So that's already set in the background in Django. So at the bottom here, all the code is in one place at the moment. Um, over time, we are organize this more effectively within our project. But for now, everything is all in this one place. So we can see from this code here, what's happening is we're building, we're fetching data using DRF at the moment, uh, this endpoint, and then we're collecting that data, and then we're passing it through props into our main function, our home function here, and then displaying it on the page. So that's currently what's happening. So we're gonna follow, I guess, a similar process um, so we don't need to touch this just yet. Let's just uh, start to create our query. So this is um, the query that we're going to build. Well, in actual fact, we've already created the query because if we go back here, this is the query that we want to run. We want to extend these items and include more, return more items, but this is the query. So this is a good thing about GraphQL. We can run our queries and test them here before we then copy them across to the front end. So let's just um, set up a simple simple implementation of this. So in order for us to actually use GraphQL, obviously we're going to need to bring this in. So we're going to need two things. We're going to need the uh, GQL. That's going to allow us to create queries or format the queries, say. Uh, and then we're going to need our client that we just built. So our client 
uh, let's just remember where we are so we're here in index our client is in API folder so dot referring to this folder slash and then API this folder here and then collect this file here say and then we want to from that file um, utilize client within it so we bring that in it's all good um, so what we can now do then is like I said I keep saying let's uh, run a query right so let's create a new function so we're going to return the data um, inside data and that's going to now uh, so we're going to return data and data so we're going to run a an asynchronous await so what we're going to do is uh, use client to send a request what um what are we going to send we're going to send a query to it okay so that's what we're doing so now we just need to describe our query so we're sending a, a request to client remember client already has the details we've set that up so it knows where to send that request where our django backend is so we're going to now run a query so our query is simply query um, and then we're going to need to use a gql here so this is basically just formatting um, pre preparing to format our our query so we're going to use the back ticks um, so here we go so now we're just going to run our query so we'll just type it out again so I'm going to call this query products I'm going to call it all products so this is just like an arb arbitrary name that I can utilize for this query so it has no reference to anything else at this point so now we we run our query so all products um, and we want to collect data so we wanted our title we wanted this description uh, we want the regular price now we need to be careful here with naming because notice the the spaces and the underlines um, for example if i go back into here you can see the regular price price as described in the database has an underscore and that gets removed and we see that there's a, a capital p so things like that we need to be careful about so here you can see i reference it to it as regular price and not regular underscore price we're going to need the slug so that's all data from our products wonderful right so that's our query so i guess what we should do here is just test to see if it's working so let's pass over data to our props so we can put it onto the page and just console log it so remember all the data is inside of data so inside of here is all of the data that we've just returned inside of data let's just go back here and what you're going to find is that our data is then going to be within all products so data dot all products that's where we're going to actually find the data so what we can do is not send all the data across we can kind of format it so we can say um, data dot all products so here I'm basically yeah I'm, I'm basically just uh, taking the data out of the data and referencing it as all products so I get the data so I'm just moving down the data um, structure so that what I send across is just the data and not data within the within the data <laughs> so it just allows me to refer to the data easier easily when I pass it across so um, so just imagine that the data is going to be kind of formatted or returned like this so data and then all products and then so data and then all products I don't know why all products there as well data then all products so basically I'm saying I'm going to pass over data dot all products so it just passes over that instead of passing over for example that and I have to kind of loop through everything so I'm just uh, drilling down to there and passing over the data right so um, let's make sure that that's okay okay yep so I'm gonna need a comma there I uh, don't forget that so that's the data so now what I can do is pass this data into my main function here so let's go and do that and then what I'll do here just underneath above the header let's just console log that and so that's referred to as data there we go so it was grayed out because I wasn't using it now I'm using it it's not grayed out 
So I'm just going to print out just like a sanity check to make sure it's OK. So let's go ahead now and run our application, see if it works. It's taking its spare time. So let's go over to our page. Here we go, this is our home page. I'm going to refresh. Mm, looks like it's working OK, it's good. And so when I now F12, I can now see this console log that I printed out and you can see the data that I'm now being that's now being returned from my GraphQL implementation on Django. So this data here is actually now being returned. Everything is all good. Um, and now I can deal with this data on the page as needed. So I'm now just going to swap over all the data on the page. Right, so let's bring us down. I don't need that anymore. I know that is also oh, the console. I know it now, I know it's now working. So let's have a look. So at the moment you can see that data comes through posts and it's being mapped across via posts. So all I need to do here is uh, just change post to data. So post is still, if you remember all the data is basically looped out um, and it's referenced as post every time it loops out. So I don't need to change this here. But what you probably noticed is that I'm not going to be utilizing underscores. So I'm just going to get rid of the card media because I don't actually even have the that yet. I need to do something else to get that. And I'm going to explain that shortly. So I'm just going to comment that out for now. So I'm going to loop through this data. I want the ID. Oh, yep. Let's get the ID. So post ID. Well, I've got ID. I've got title. Now notice here post dot regular price. Remember my data is now being referred to as regular price and not regular underscore price like it was with um, Django DRF. So that's now changed. So exciting times. Let's have a look, see if it works. Post slug. I've got this slug. Let's have a look. There we go. You can see it's actually happened now. It looks like I've, yeah, I've got my keys. I need to sort out the keys. Uh, post ID. Um, hmm. Not entirely sure why it's not using the keys, but that's a, a trivial problem at this point. Right, so you can see that it's working. Now the problem I've got now is that you can't see, and uh, well, it's not linked for one. And secondly, you can't see the images. So we just need to quickly remind ourselves about the database. So I've got the documentation. This is in Django, the document schema. So let's just go over to the actual schema. This link here links you to this page and you can copy and paste this code in from here, from here, just copy and paste it in and you'll be able to see then the schema for the database you're working with. All right, so this is the database. So I've just collected all the data from the product table. Now you can see that the in product image table is a separate table. So the next task that we need to try and work out what to do is how to collect data from a separate table. So the foreign key is in the product image table. So the question is, how do I traverse or reverse or use a reverse foreign key from the product table to the product image table. Now with Django DRF, I'm not saying it's complicated, but it can be quite a drawn out process potentially of trying to think of how to do that. Here in Graph, it's building associations. So what I'm going to do here in Graph is basically, I've got the product table already described as an object. All I need to do is build a new object and then I just need to tell product um, that product image exists and graph will do the rest for me. It's as simple as that, I promise. So um, just to confirm if you're not familiar with this, so product image is connected via a foreign key here called product, which I probably need to change. Apologies for the naming here. This is going to sound a bit weird, but I'm just going to go with it for now. But I probably need to change this later. So product image has a, a, a foreign key called product connected to the product table. All right, let's just remember that. So what I need to do here now is just go into my schema. I'm going to need to create a new object here for my for my image. So let's call this uh, image type, for example. Actually, let's, let's just call it product image, product image type. Okay, so product image type, that's going to be a Django object type. 
Now I need a, a class meta and then my model. So I really need to bring my model in uh, equals. So let's bring in my model. So that was a product image. Okay, so that's my model like before. And now I just need to describe the fields I want to use. So inside of my product image, I've got an ID that I want to bring in. Um, I've got the the image. That's the link to the image. And I've also got an alt text. So let's bring that in. So those are the fields I want to use. Right, so now I've got these two tables. Behind the scenes, we're building a graph. So what we have now is we've got two tables floating. So let's build an association between product type and product image so that we can traverse from product type to collect data about its images. So because there's a foreign key already that exists between product type and uh, product image, there's already a foreign key set in product image here um, in our model. That's what we worked out from the schema here. We've got this foreign key. What I can now do is I can refer to that foreign key, just simply refer to this foreign key with inside of my product. So my foreign key is called product. Let's go back into my models in Django. So if I go down here, you can see that um, I've got this foreign key here called product to the product table. And I've referred to this related, the related name is product image. Okay, so the related name is product image. Right, so let's go back to my schema. What I'm going to do here in the product table is I'm literally just going to refer to that foreign key. So I can do that by just referring to the name, the field of the product image foreign key. Mm. That didn't really come out how I intended it, but hopefully you get the idea. So that was, the foreign key was called product. Or the field was called product. That was the foreign key inside the image table. So I've literally just referred to it. So let's um, save that up. So there isn't really much else I need to do at this point, uh, in all honesty. So I guess uh, we should just have a look. So let's go into here. Uh, so I'm just going to refresh. Remember, when you make any changes, just make a refresh. That's important. So now what I can do is I can now refer to this as, I can't, oh, I can't actually remember what I called it. <laughs> Um, it's called product, sorry, product. Okay, so you can see it's not actually appearing just yet. So what I want to be able to do is refer to that product so that it actually kind of appears and I can start to utilize that data. So what is the problem here? So if you remember what I did is I referred to the the model name but in actual fact what i want to refer to is the related name so let's just go back into the the model so i set myself a, tra a trap so it's actually actually i want to refer to the related name and not the the field but i just wanted to go through that process because hopefully that establishes the point a little bit more so let's go back into my schema Let's now call this product image. So that's the real related name to the foreign key that is here in the product image table. Right, so let's now go back and save and refresh. Let's have a look. So now I've got this item called product image. Cool. So let's drill down there. So I open up the brackets and let's collect some data. So ID, and there we go. So what I've done now is I've traversed that foreign key over from the other table and now collecting information about each product that's related inside of those inside of that image table. So let's get the individual images for each product. So it's called image. That's the link. Now this is the next problem. So this is what I'm returning currently. This is the link to the image. Now this isn't the full link. So the problem you've got here is because you don't have the full link to the image. When I send that across to the front the front page, or sorry, the, the front end, when I send this across to the front end, it's not going to work because I don't have the full qualified link. I only have images slash. So that's not actually going to link to the image. So what I need to do now is actually build this link to the image. 
So let's just go back into our Django front end. And what we need to do here is we'll just make a new function here, which um, will basically just collect um, the image URL and just put it together, basically. So let's go ahead and do that. Right, so what we want to do is we want to get this image link and we want to basically stick at the front the um, our Django address so it then clearly links completely to that image that's stored in our media folder in Django. Remember all the images are coming from our media folder that we set up. So if you're not familiar with that again just I'll say it one more time have a look at the previous tutorial and go through those steps. Right so let's uh, set up a new function here and this is going to be called resolve image. Right, so we're just taking uh, self and info. Okay, so now we're going to resolve this image. So if self dot image. So basically, if we if we call the image, oh, if we call image, we we're going to do something. So what we're going to do is we're going to self dot image, and then we're basically going to stick everything together. So how we do that? We use the info context dot build absolute URI. So we can then we can then uh, set this up. So self dot image dot URL. Um, okay. So all we're doing here is we're basically taking the the image link and we're basically just building a uh, an absolute URI. So we're basically getting the information about the the address of our system and we're sticking that together with the image URI URL um, that we're collecting from the database to make the fully qualified link. And there we go. We're just basically just going to return that. So that's what's going to retur be returned now for each image link. So when I save that, um, remember it was called image, self image. So when I do that and refresh and then run the query again, you can now see I'm getting the fully qualified link slash media slash images and then the link. And when I hover over it, it looks like the image actually popped up then for some bizarre reason. Oh, hello. There we go. So you can actually see the, the images being produced and you get a nice preview of it. So there we go. So that's um, how I need to kind of format and prepare that. So let's go back now to the front end and finish this off. So um, we probably need to first of all change this this query because we need to update it. So I can just copy from here. So product image ID image, and we also want to take the uh, the alt text. So we also want that. So let's just uh, take that and then let's move it across to the front end. So here I can just extend here. There we go. So that's that in place. So that's I can tab that a bit if I want to. So now I've collected that data. Let's go into here and set this up. So here we just need to know and just to think what's going on here. So we're using this dot here to, to kind of traverse to move forward into the data. So the dot allows us to kind of move deeper into the data. So here, for example, all products dot and that then take us to this data, then dot, then that take us to this data, then dot and, and so on. So I'm using dot to kind of move into different sections of this return data here. In fact, there's return data on this side here. So let's have a look at what we're going to need to do here. So in post, inside of um, post this data, I'm going to have a data structure um, which will also have product I image. So I need to go into my data and then I need to dot product image. So I need to go one kind of step further into product image. Now here I'm using um, zero, which represents the first item that's returned, the first image that's returned, and then image. So let's just uh, let's just see if this works. Maybe this will just maybe this will just work. Um, let's give it a go. Oh no. So cannot read property zero. So it's this structure here we now to think need to work out what is the problem. Now I can already see what the problem is. 
and you may have already guessed this remember we're not using the underscore anymore so again just double check your just double check um, by going into the the IQL here and you can see from here it says product image without the underscore so we just make need to make sure that we're um, calling this correctly so product image that's kind of the the data point that we need to to utilize so let's do a bit of that and then refresh the page and make it sound like it's going to work and it works there we go so we have now have our image right so that's our image in place and uh, it looks like we've got the the alt text also available um we actually that's a good point so the alt text also requires us to get rid of that and do a bit of that so we don't need the underscore again just double check with the data that's returned um so image oh we're not actually collecting the alt text doesn't look like let's have a look maybe i made a mistake there okay so alt uh and text let's just uh alt text alt text okay so we're collecting the alt text that's not a problem so we formatted that um yep so that is now working and we're good to go there so next thing then is the fact that we can't there's no link the link isn't working at the moment so we need to sort that link out too so let's go back in here so you notice that we're collecting the slug hmm. okay so product post slug so what's happening here then we are collecting the slug looks like it's um okay so we need to just double check everything so we are asking for the slug so we just need to ask ourselves and go back well if we're asking for the slug are we actually collecting the slug from the schema so inside of a schema here yeah i've got slug so it looks like i am trying to get the slug that's the url path so that looks okay so there's nothing obvious here which is suggesting that i'm not getting the slug i can look at my iql and see if i can actually return the slug properly so let's just type that in is the slug being returned it is so that's kind of the, the slug right there and um, it's just the name of the product so let's just go back into my code again and have a look to see what potentially the problem so interact is okay so and the slug looks like it's is working okay when i click on the items that's linking me to the individual pages notice my my mouse doesn't change it doesn't look like it's a link it's just a error not an error in the code but it just needs changing to make it more obvious that that is a link so that is my link working okay so that's the the link that i built looks like it's working fine so obviously what i can do now is just remove the the api here fetch that we created with drf so i remove that the we keep the categories in place for now we'll do that shortly so i don't need posts anymore and then i can remove post now from my function so i don't pass that in and i think once we've done that we just double check and our page is now being converted from drf to graphql so let's just move ahead now and just go to the next page and just do the same thing with the next page so let's just remember that we have a dynamic link so we do the product search and next so when we click on an individual item it takes us to the product page now here we're using a dynamic link so what we're doing is in the links that we're building on this page we click on them they are sending across the name of the slug that's being generated from the database and it's using this as a dynamic link so this is just one page we're using for all of these products now what's happening here you can see this product page is called slug so this is referring to a dynamic link again i explained this all in the previous tutorial the one i keep linking to you reminding you about so that's creating a dynamic link so that word that's being generated here is being basically passed in to this slug and then what we can then do is utilize that to make a dynamic link so let's go into here so what we're doing here is we're collecting that through the parameters so at the bottom here what we're doing is we're collecting that slug name through these parameters here and then inside the parameters we have the slug uh, say variable or data that's the the name of this here that's just being passed in through the parameters and then we're collecting it and then we're utilizing it to then fetch from the database the individual item 
so that we can display that individual item on this page. That's how the page is working. That's how we create these dynamic pages. So what we do now, what we now need to do is set this up with GraphQL. So the good thing here is that once we set out um, our object, we set out the object. There's nothing else we need to do here um, to or to worry about. Right, so hmm. so we need to collect an individual item from the database. So we're going to need to set up, oh, I'm going to set this up in this way. Um, we're going to create a new point. So this is going to be like a query reference. So this is going to be all um, products. Um, it's going to be by name, right? So all products by name. Yeah, all products by name. So that's going to be my kind of query reference uh, that starts off so I can qu query. That's going to equal uh, graphene. Now this time I'm, I'm returning one item, so I'm going to be utilizing field. And now I need to describe what data I want to be using. So again, I'm going to be utilizing the product type. So that's my data object I'm going to be collecting data from, product type. Same again as the previous. So that sets up that that sets that up for now. But what I want to do here is I want to pass in a string because I want to run a query um, that I want to specify within my GraphQL query. So for example, I want to collect one item from the database. So I need a way of saying, well, I want to select this one from a database. So I need to be able to pass in a parameter to do that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say um, slug equals graphene string, graphene string. So I'm going to pass in a string, which I'm going to refer to as slug. And then I'm going to make it required. So you have to type this in um, equals true in order to run this query. So it is expecting it, um, otherwise it's not going to work. So that's that now i'm just wondering why there's an issue there um there needs to be a comma okay so we need a comma okay so there we go so that allows me now to pass in a string to this essentially this query so now i need to resolve this query so what i need to do here then so i could adapt this potentially but i'm going to try and make this a little bit more easy to understand by creating a separate so I'm going to resolve, let's resolve all uh, products. Uh, I'm going to give it a, a capital P. I'm going to resolve all products uh, by name. Um, and now what I need to do is I need to pass in some more some more parameters here. So I've got root, which I haven't explained, and info, which again I haven't explained. But I need to now pass in an additional and that's going to be slug. So it's going to be this string that we enter into the into the query that's going to be passed in. So we've got slug. Okay, so now we need to do something with it. So let's try to um, return um, products or product dot, was it product? Yeah, object. So we're just going to run a, a Django query, objects.get an individual item where the slug in the table equals the slug that we typed in. So we're just matching the slug. So if you're wondering what the hell is a slug? So it's just a, a data point that we're using inside of our products table. Mm, product specification, excuse me, products table. So we've got the slug here. So we use the slug to kind of create address addressable points to potentially access the products table. Um, so this is basically going to have a name in it. And all we're doing is we're going to match whatever someone's typed into the query to a product. And when we make that match, it's going to return that individual product. Excuse me. Right, so that's that done. So we're going to try and do that. Um, we can do an accept here. Um, accept uh, the product, uh, for example, does does not exist. 
in which case return none. Okay, so we've now done that. So this is our new query point. So let's uh, let's give it a go. So let's go back into our IQL, our <laughs> graph IQL. Let's just uh, start again. So this is a different query, isn't it? So this is a uh, oh nope. Let's just refresh. Okay, so we now are refreshed. So all products by name. That's what we want to run. So we're now going to resolve something. So remember at this point we need to pass in a name so this is going to be slightly different how we set this up so let's go ahead and add a new parameter so this is going to be slug colon and then we want to kind of name what it is we want to collect so we do need to know a slug from our from our data so let's just go into our admin yep and then let's go to products so let's just grab this so a slug here this is called boots so we're going to grab this item uh, so we'll just do this manually for now so let's go back into let's get rid of that and uh, here we're going to call this boots so that's what that's the data i want to collect so don't forget to close that and now we just need to describe what data we want to return so let's just get the id and then the title for example run that and we've got a problem okay so no attributes object it looks like I've, I've made a typo so let's go back into our django let me get objects okay so let's run that again so I'll refresh oh and then run and there we go so we now have our product so that's how to query with graph ql ql sorry um passing over a uh, a variable so now what we need to do is expand on this. Uh, so let's just think about what other things that we're going to need here. So um, just thinking about the page, we're probably going to need the ID title, uh, description, we're not using that yet, the regular price, and then the product image. So we're gonna need the product image. So again, although we've made this new um, this new query, this new uh, resolve here, we can still use the same tools we we're using before. So we've got the product image, we're going to need the ID, and we're going to need the image, and we're going to need the uh, alt text. There we go. So that's our query. We're just selecting what we need. And there we go. We've now collected the data from the database. And you see how flexible, how dynamic it is um, to do. I don't have to worry about M multiple endpoints. I just need to sort out my resolves and those can be fairly broad i can really make those uh really broad so that potentially a lot of data can be collected or a lot of queries can be made but the queries are flexible if i don't want that i don't need to return it it just doesn't get returned so that allows me to control and um, with great detail what is being returned to the front end so what we're going to do now then is we just need to pass this over to our front end and then sort out the front end so um, we can then remove this item here right so let's do this so we need to follow the path that we set out in the first page so we're going to need the gql and client so let's just bring that into this page so this page i'm referring to here is the product slug in case you were wondering so let's bring that in now let's go to the bottom and we'll sort out the the query so this time we're going to work in a slightly different way i call this maybe stage two so we're going to separate the query and the actual request so i call this stage two so stage one um it's just basically run the query straight away and describing the query stage one so stage two we're going to break up so we're going to have a separate query and a se separate kind of statement uh, if you like and then bring that into the request and then the third step, which we'll probably do in the next tutorial, is we'll then start to move this and structure this within our project so that we can call it from separate pages. So let's just go to um, phase two. Right, so um, let's just build a, a query. So let's call this all, uh, let's, uh, let's call this uh, product info, product data, call it whatever you like product data so that's going to equal uh, gql 
happy day so um we then basically just need to describe our um our query so utilizing our back ticks um so let's do query and then we're going to need to set up some variables so like you saw before with the iql here we're going to need to pass in a variable here so obviously we can't make a static variable because we want multiple products so we're going to need to pass in a variable into our query so this is why we're going to stage two here with our with setting out our query so um, what we need to do first is define in the query <laughs> um, what data is potentially want to pass across so here i'm defining um, <coughs> the slug the data and then i'm describing the type of data so this is a string that's what i want to pass in right so now i've got my all product uh oh no what have i called it i've called it yeah all product by name okay there we go so now what i can do is um describe like i did previously slug and then what i want to match up so this time i want my variable slug there we go and now i can just go ahead as per normal and just uh just run my run my query so i just need to select what data i want to collect so i'll just paste that in and then i also need the the alt text right so there's my query um so that's uh that's been set out okay so you're bound to have a problem and the problem is probably going to be some simple typo so just double triple check the code um right so that's that done so that's my query so let's now actually pass in some variables so i'm going to just quickly or manually just build this variable here so slug equals so what i need is the from parameters i need the slug so what's happening here is that um, i'm taking this slug item here and i'm going to need that to match and make a query to the database and match something from the database so i need to extract that out and that's stored in my pram slug so all i need to do here is uh, take that and pass it in down here so that's going to collect that word from the url and now all i need to do i say all is i basically just need to run my i just need to run the query so i'm going to save all the data from the query into data equals await uh, dot oh no client dot uh, query so i'm going to run the query so remember client is the connection details query i'm just describing the fact that i want to run a query i'm going to need some parentheses here there we go uh, so inside of here i just need to set out um, the query so just tell them what query to run and that is going to be i've got it product data so that's the query that i want to run and now i need to pass in the the variables okay so this one is going to be in this case variable of course variables i'm going to pass in slug okay so this slug here um so i'm going to pass in slug now what i potentially could do is i could just do that but maybe i'd need to format here so i'm going to need the curly braces um so there's two ways i could pass that in so just be careful of how you're going to format that um well that wasn't strictly a clue, clue but just give you an idea just be careful how you format that uh, so that's uh your slug that goes in so this data goes gets passed into here pass through here uh into here to actually then make that um dynamic request for individual items and of course every page you go to will have a different slug as we're calling it here and of course, of course that will then be used to create that individual uh, query for that individual product when you go to those individual product pages right so hopefully you can see the the flow there that's um that data is being generated here it's being passed in to the query through here and then down to here right so that's now done so hopefully what i can do now is same as what we did before data we then just uh, collect um we drill down the data and just collect the data and that we're going to want to use and pass across um i can't remember what it's called 
get it all correct by me. Okay, so we're going to need a comma. So that's that. Uh, so now what we can now do is just do a sanity check to make sure it's all working. So in our main function up here, I'm just going to pass in that that data. And then just above the header here, uh, let's go ahead and do a console.log. And then we're passing that data. So just to see if we can print it out in the console log. Let's go back to our page. We're doing a refresh our page. Uh, F12. So it says undefined there. So it looks like there is a potentially as a problem. So the data is not potentially being uh, returned. So uh, let's just go back to the home page. Let's just pass it in again. So undefined slug. Okay, so there's potentially a problem here. So let's just take a look at what's happening. So data. So one thing that might be happening is just need to be careful um, that you might be using kind of similar, uh, you might be using similar names, variable names. That's one thing because I wasn't checking that. So let's just take a look. So we've got, okay, so just looking at the terminal, it's uh, describing what the problem is here. The fact that I copied across the client from the index page. Now the index page resides in a different directory structure. Notice that I'm using the products folder here and I'm working within this file. Now that means that I'm trying to call the Apollo client file from the product slug page. Of course, that's in a separate folder. So at the top of this page, what I need to do, instead of dot referring to this directory and then API, I need to go outside of this directory, go back one of the directory, traverse into the previous directory. So I'm inside of here. I need to go out of products and then I can then go forward into the API folder and then the Apollo client folder. So that's what's happening there. Uh, so hopefully um, it should all be OK now. <laughs> Potentially there's a problem still. Um, so let's just uh, save that, see if it compiles. OK, so let's just uh, refresh. And you, this is a very common thing. There we go. So if you start getting this error message here you know you've got a problem um, so at this point the problem here is that it's not very obvious what the problem is um, that that is true of this so you're going to have problems here definitely um, so uncaught in promise error failed to load static props so it's not as obvious as it could be most definitely um, so what we need to do now is just uh, work through the code and have a look to see what the problem might be. So extra info undefined result array errors. So hmm. status code 400. So it's not too obvious what potentially the problem is here. So I'm just setting this problem up for you just to think if you're not familiar with this, the problem here is that I'm showing you this pathway. And if you've not used this before, it almost becomes impossible for you to solve problems um, because you've no idea potentially where to start. So um, uh, if you're following the code and you have problems and the problem that I've just shown you, just work backwards. So let's remember that what we've done is we passed it into this console log. So let's just get rid of that. Let's get rid of the data from there and let's just remove the data point down here all right so let's start like that so that's now all removed um so we'll have a look now to see if it loads you can still see we're getting an error so okay so obviously i'm not referring to data now that's not a problem um so let's just remove this here and then let's try again and you can still see that um we well, can still now see that we don't have an error. So although I know no, you potentially know nothing about the code, by just moving back and forward, you can see that potentially the problem in the code is it's potentially here. Now, if there was an error here in the query, it was likely that you'd actually cause an error. So if there was a syntax error, um, it would be, be likely that it would cause an error. It's not suggesting that the code is um, correct, but and that's generally the case. So it looks like here is the, where the problem is. 
So further to that, if you go into Django, you can see that I'm receiving a bad request. So suggesting potentially that there is a problem with the, the query or potentially we're not doing something that we need to do here. Now, of course, we've already tested to see if this would work. Um, and it, the query without kind of a variable here. Um, and it does look as though that is working OK. So I was hoping it'd be a little bit more useful there, provide you some more information. Uh, so it's a case of just looking through um, the code. Obviously, you're just following the code here. So if you do make a mistake, just follow the code as best you can. Um, I do apologize, but the problem here is is in the detail. So what I've done here is I've made a mistake here. I'm called product and not product image. So it's actually my the query that is incorrect. So what I was trying to suggest to you was to work backwards. OK, so it, obviously when I run the query, there was a problem. This code looked OK. Um, so now I'm just going to try and strip back. So, for example, what I could do if I wasn't happy about it, maybe parsing the variables, I could change this variable here and just put in the static variable like I did in the example until eventually I just strip back and strip back as much as possible, keep going backwards um, until potentially I find a problem that can sometimes solve. But here it's the case of the fact that I'm utilizing the wrong name for the product image. Um, maybe you maybe you saw that. So product image. So it needs to be a capital, of course. So if I change that and I go back into the page, the page actually will be loading now. There we go. So that suggests that this is working. So what I can now do is pass over data like I did before. So data. And it was data dot and then all product name. So that's just passing over the the data. I need a comma there. And then we can pass that into the function the top here. It's line 48. We go. So now we can go ahead and do our sanity check, but I'm sure it's going to be OK. Console.log. So let's go back into our page, just refresh F12. It looks like we're collecting our data right here. So that's our data. So now we can go ahead and swap it over. So we're just going to swap the data over from our existing fetch here. So we should be safe now to remove this and then go into remove the posts and now go back in top here, remove posts from here. And now we can then go into our map here, for example. So we just need to look down. So first we've got post here, so that needs to change to data.title and then post here. Obviously, we, we don't need to use data. We could have just referred to it as post. So instead of doing that, we could just, for example, go down to the bottom here. Instead of calling this data, we could just call it post. And then we wouldn't really need to, to do much else. Um, so now that's called post. Let's just refer to it as post. So let's go and pass it into our variable as post. So now you might imagine everything is OK. So it's just the case potentially now just uh, changing over the um, names. So there's probably going to be a potential problem here. So let's just uh, let's just remove this for now and let's just see if everything else is working. So in actual fact, that's a, that's a map. So, so we've got uh, post.title. Um, down here we've got post.title, post regular price. So that needs change into um, the new format. So let's go into the page. I saw the problem because I'm trying to refer to data here. And obviously data doesn't exist anymore um, because I'm trying to to move it in as post. So let's go ahead and change that to post. Let's go back in. Seems to be getting an error still. So seems to be maybe still some kind of mismatch. So let's just start again. So we've got 
this we know this works we know this is working here so we're passing the data as data data into post right so we're passing that into post so let's move up top here so just a case of working out potentially we're referring to it so apologies so move it in as post so log post post title so let's just go ahead again and from the head and container just going to move that you can see now we're actually printing this out so potentially this is suggesting to me and um, there's a problem here uh, with the code and moving down so maybe there's something that I need to to change here so I'm just going to get rid of um, this this here this paper here this image here because this is potentially referring to the wrong data it's calling the wrong data um, so that's that so data categories that's fine post post title okay so it's called post title so I think that's okay so there we go so now the page is actually loading so it's just a case of um, I know it's very uh, difficult to explain exactly what's going on here but or for you to work out but what's happening here is I'm trying to output some data which simply doesn't exist in the post so it's causing the problem so I've temporarily removed it these are the images that I need to kind of change in a minute so because obviously I'm trying to retrofit or, or change over from DRF to um, graph QL I appreciate it's a potentially a, a little bit of a rocky process um, but hopefully you're able to follow through of course all the code is going to be there for you to have a look at and this is just about you know, we're jumping into the deep end almost here rather than going step by step um, although I'm trying to trying to do two things at the same time go step by step from the very beginning and jump in um, as deep as possible so hopefully you see that that's being passed over now so everything is now working okay up until this image here so now we need to think about mapping across this image so again it's understanding um, our data that's being returned so what we've done here apologies to keep moving around what we've done here is we've taken our data we've drilled down to just the data so that leaves us with just the data that we can reference inside of post so let's go back up here and let's see if we can sort this out here so this component here is oh, the top one here um, we should have a yeah we've, we've got this map here so what we're doing here with this one let's just um have a look at this so, so we've got two components so this is basically printing out all the images that we have about that particular product so we're going to need to loop through that so let's just go back into our so, so we're calling this a product image so that's a reference then to the image section so that's what we need to loop through so let's go back in let's just go back in so we've got inside of a post we've got the product image and it's that data what we want to loop through so we're going to loop through that data as C whatever you like and now we need to print it out so um, the data inside of there is now C so let's give that a go so that's going to print out the the first one um, that it finds after each loop okay so we don't want to do that because we want to print out all of them so let's just go into let's just output the image and the um, alt text so the alt text remember it is formatted differently so to confirm so we go into the data now the data in the image section is within the product image section so we know that by looking here so inside of our data we go down to the product image section inside of here we can kind of loop through all the images that we find for the image so at the moment this product only has one image for example but if the product had more images we would want to loop through them all and display them that's what we're trying to do here so hmm let's go through that when we find a product an item we're just going to output it so let's just uh, give this a go see if this works there it is so it's just outputted all the the images now all the formatting is already in place I do apologize I'm not going through that so the point is it's looping through it's all good right so let's do the type of same thing here so in this case we're not looping through we're just collecting the first image so here we're going to use post 
Now let's remember that the product image, that's the kind of reference point to where the image is. So the zero represents the first item in that um, array. And then we're just going to output the image and the text. So hopefully now, there we go, the image appears. Now it's a small image, so if it was a bigger image, it would stretch up to that particular size. Um, so some of these products will have that. So click here. So this image only has one and we're done. We've, we've literally just built that page. I know that that was a, a pretty rough ride. I do apologize for it not being as streamlined as I was hoped it to be. Um, but have a look at the code, the process here. We've generated our query. Um, we've then um, injected our variables in. We passed it over as post this time. And then just by understanding the structure of our code, that's important. We've then extracted the images out. Okay then, so next up, we've got the categories. So what we want to do now is when we click on the categories, apologies it's so small, it's just I'm kind of zoomed in here because I've got a small, show, working on a smaller screen. Uh, so here, when I click on shoes, at the moment it takes me to the page and shows me all the items in the shoe category. So if we have a look at the, the admin area, if you've not seen this before, we've got categories. Inside of here, create some categories. And then the products, if we go into product, it's then part of a category. So let's just add it to shoes. So we've definitely got one in shoe. I think there's two items already in shoes now. So yeah, so we'll have a look now at this page. So let's go into our page here. And so now we've got a new category. Now this is a dynamic page again, because what we're doing is we're passing in this word shoes. And that obviously correlates to a category name. So we're going to run a query on the shoes, for example, and then just return all the shoes, all the products that are in that category. That's the idea here. So and let's go back into our client and slug. So the first thing we need to do, this should be a straightforward, a little bit more straightforward than the last one. So we're just going to copy across from the product slug, our GKO on client. So let's go and do that and put that up at top. That's the first thing that we need to do. So let's now go into Django. So I want to do this the opposite way. So, so far we've been using reverse foreign key. So let's now use a uh, kind of the other way around. So we're going to bring in the category table here and we're going to run a query from the category table. So we're going to basically select um, all from products where category equals X, for example. So let's bring in um, a, a category type and let's make a new uh, Django object from the categories table. So, um, so we'll bring in uh, the class meta model. Uh, the model is going to be called category. That's our model from our models. And now we can go ahead and just add the, the fields. It's like I've never used a keyboard before. 20 years of using a keyboard. I still can't type. Right, ID. Oh, it doesn't help. I've got a big microphone in the way. Um, so product. Um, oh, no, so we're in, we're in category. So so category, just remind me, so category, category, ID. We've got name in the category. And then maybe we want to bring in the, for example, the slug. Uh, so just anything that we've got here. So. There's some special items that I want to bring in in a minute, but I think for now, yeah, probably just the ID and name in actual fact is all we're going to need here because we can just run the query from the name. Right. I do apologize. Right. So now we've done that, uh, let's go into our query here and let's just uh, build kind of a, a new query for this. So this can be called um, Let's call this, uh, yeah, let's call this cat category by name. Let's call it that. So let's call it category by name. So this is going to return all the products based upon a category that we select. So that's going to equal graphene dot. That's going to be a field. Um, and then we're going to bring in the category type object. And this time we do the same thing as we did before. 
So, um, but this time we're say name because it's the name field we want to match, and then graphene is going to be a string, and then we'll do the required equals true. So it must be, you must include that to run this query. So there we go. So that's that. So let's go ahead and build a result. So this is going to be really simple. Uh, we're going to have a new function. We're going to call that resolve um, category by name. Um, then we're going to pass in root info and also our name. So that's that extra parameter. And then we're just going to try and run a, a query. So let's uh, return the category uh, dot objects dot get. And then we want to get the category name equals the parameter name. And then yeah, we can set out set category dot does not exist return none. Okay, so simply we're just passing in this parameter, which is going to be the name of the category. We're going to try and get that category, but this time what we're going to do from the category, we're also going to select then all the product information. So you might think, well, this is a little bit backwards because surely we should select all the products where category equals whatever. But here we're doing it the other way around. So where category equals name, we're then going to select all the products from there. So now, like we did here with the product, we used the foreign key to almost kind of make a link between the product table and the product image table because the product image table had a foreign key to the product type. So here we know that the foreign key is in the product type. And so we're not doing it back. I said we're going to do it backwards. So um, we've got the foreign key in the product type. So we're going to kind of need to bring that in then to the uh, category type. So let's go into the models and let's have a look here in the product. We've got category. Uh, as the foreign key. So the question now is, do we need a related name? So let's go ahead and put one in. So we have a related name equals, we just call this category. So now we go back into our schema. Let's put category here. And that will then, that will then create that kind of connection between, so we can then access the product details through the category table. Um, so I guess we should give this a go. So that's a refresh. Um, so we're going to make a new query. So this, let's get category by name. So let's just uh, pass in name. Uh, so um, it's called shoes. All right. So we're going to, we've got the name shoes. So let's just get the ID. Give that a go. So the, the ID of shoes is number two. So now what we can do is um, category. So that's going to then pass us over to the products. So let's get the product ID and title. So this is all the products in the in the um, this is all the products that has the category of shoes. And there we go. So there's two products that are in the category of shoe. So now I have my product. So now all I need to do. I say all I need to do, what I need to do now is go back here in my category. And of course, what I'm passing in is the slug, the name. So I'm I'm passing in the the name here of the category through the slug. So up here, I'm going to gather that. I'm going to then utilize that to make my query. So it returns all the, the shoes, for example. So let's go back into our category and slug. Let's go down to the bottom. So we've already brought in the the client and the GQL. So we can run a query or set up a query. So let's go down here and underneath our existing queries, let's just uh, build this up like we did previously. 
So it's going to be a similar process. Uh, so let's just uh, type this out. So we're going to build the query first. So let's just call this, um, should we call this all products, for example. So that's going to equal GQL. And then we're going to need uh, to build the query. So our query then is going to be, uh, let's do query. Um, we're going to then pass in the name. Um, that's going to be a string. Um, and then we're going to need the category. Um, or oh, what did I call it? So look, category by name. So we could probably just go ahead now and copy this in. We get category by name. So name is going to be uh, the variable name. So that's what we're going to take from the parameters, the slug parameter, the name. We're going to run this. So this should um, it should be right ID. Then category, we're going to get the ID in the title of the product. So we're probably going to need to drill down a bit further and get the image as well. So um, let's just remind ourselves how we do that. Let's go into the slug product. So here, if you remember, um, we got the, well, we're gonna need the, the title description and everything else here. So let's just do the image first. So we'll just grab that and go back into our category. Uh, so here's the product image. So we've got the category. So we've got the, the information about the category here. We go into category. Remember, this is referring to the product. So we take out the ID and title. Now we probably also want the description and regular price maybe. So let's bring that in as well. And then what we do is then we go in further into the image. So we reference that by product image. We get the image of the, the product and that's we're going to get the ID image and alt text. So yeah, I think that's, a, that's good to go. So let's go ahead now and just plug this in. So this is um, going to be uh, name is then going to recall params dot slug so we're going to grab the the slug that's the the url information up here so we're going to grab that and we're now going to pass it into our query okay so let's build this up um, data uh, equals await oh client so we're going to use the client so we know where to send the query and then we're going to build a query okay so inside this query we're going to um, set out our query so that's going to be called this here all products i suppose i should tell that right so that's our query all products and then we we'll just need to then pass in our variables which is going to be in this case name okay so here we want the curly braces okay right so there we go so we pass that data in and we send it off so i think we're, we're good there um so we can move down now and i think we can test this out by just running it on the page see if it works so ex unexpected name hmm okay so there's a problem here so that just identifies there's a problem with the code so um let's have a look we've got query all products equals gql and then query looks okay to me So it looks okay to me, but obviously it's not. So I spelled it incorrectly. So it should be query. Um, that's handy. So um, I'll refresh. Okay, so it's loading up, which is suggesting that the code's okay. So you've seen that if there is a mistake in this code, then it's going to cause a problem because I am actually tr I'm actually running this code. Let's not r forget that I'm actually passing it to the client and running the query. So it's actually returning that data or is trying to return that data. So I can make the assumption that it's probably okay um, because the page is loading. So let's give this a go. 
So what I'm going to do now is going to get rid of the the post information here, fetching it. So I'm going to get rid of that and that now breaks everything. But I'm going to now pass my new data into there. So this is data dot and then the name. So category by name. So I'm drilling down to that data again. Hopefully that kind of is starting to make sense behind the scenes. So I'm going from my data, which is like here. I'm going into there and basically just collect getting this data. So I'm working on that data level when I loop it through, for example, on the front page. So now that's uh, in place. Obviously, it's broken everything else now. So this is referred to as posts. So let's go into my just make sure so we return that into the function or bring that into the function as posts. So, OK, so now we've got problems. So I do have this card media here. I'm just going to get rid of that image or just blank it out for now. So that's where the image is. And I do know that this regular price should be regular price. So that's that in place. Everything else probably is OK. So let's go back and refresh. Mm -hmm. So we're mapping across. So it looks like there's a problem with my mapping. So posts, map posts. So data is coming in as posts. Now, what I probably should have done was a, a sanity check. So I've moved it in as posts. There seems to be a post a mapping issue here. So let's just take out this map for now. I'm just going to cut that. I'm using my console log to output posts. So I'll have a look at that. Let's just see if it's actually been outputted. So we've got an object. And inside of there, we've got category. So this is slightly different. So again, um, you can see that because I've got this multiple layers, multiple layers going on, I now need to go inside of my query um, into category and then into category name and then into category in order to get to my kind of top level of my data because my top level of my data is like here. This is where the kind of the data starts. So what I probably need to do here is drill down a bit further into my data before I pass it across. So if I go down here, I know that I need to go into data category ID and then dot category. My data's kind of gone down to the next level. So now when I run this again on my page and refresh, you can see when I've collected the data, I'm left with just the data that I can then kind of work with. Obviously, I don't need to do this. It just it makes it easier to work with when I pass it over to that function and use it to output it onto the onto the page here. So now I've got that in place. Let's go back and just put in the, the map again because I should now probably have access to that. Um, it probably still won't work, mind. Oh no, okay, so you can see now I'm, I'm actually mapping out items. So now I just need to um, work out the images. So work out the format of this image. So let's go and actually sort out this image because I think it's this image here is uh, ruining everything at the moment. So we need to go into the data. We need to find out what the data is referred to in the image. So we go into a data, we go to category. Oh, well, actually, let's um let's not use that. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, so down here we go into category, and then we need to go to regular price and then product image. So up here then it should be post and then regular reg oh, and product image. Excuse me. So that's where the data is, the image data is. So we're just going to extract the first item and then print out the image and the alt, alt, alt text. There we go. So that should loop around now, potentially. Um, those, so let's go back in and there we go. So I've selected shoes and all the shoes items have now been returned. There are no clothes at the moment, so that's why. And there we go, so we now have the shoes item. now. If you are coming from the DRF package, what you probably know is here we're using MPTT, which is a hierarchical structure that allows us to create categories um, in a hierarchical structure. So let's just go back to our admin here in the categories. And you can see I've got this structure here. Now, what I want to do, what I did in the previous tutorial is I showed you well, how to get all the boots, for example, and all the shoes at the same time, because some items might be in the shoe category and the boots category. Now, probably it's not going to be the case. You want them to be in the boots category, not the shoes category, maybe, because they probably have a class of shoe, a cat, 
a shoe type. So they're probably all going to be in boots or whatever shoe type they are, of course. So you can uh, move an up, up and down levels. And I'm going to show you in the next example how to use MPTT because what we've got here are levels. This is level zero. And then it's you can see it's kind of tabbed across, uh, indented. So that's level one. And this is level two. So we can select based upon levels. And I'll show you how to do that next in the next example. Because what we need to do now, you see that clothes and shoes, they are at this level here. Clothes and shoes are at level one. So when I want to kind of output into my menu there, I want to only select clothes and shoes. So that's level one. So what I need to do, first of all, is just go into Django and just add that to my categories because I want to be able to extract out the levels from the, the database. There's a field called level and I can then utilize that to then extract out those that, that level of, of menu, for example. So let's now go into um, back into our code and let's now sort out. So we're, we're now change this here from DRF into our new. Oh, actually, I need to do the, the price there, but we'll change that into Let's swap that over from DRF. So what you see here in DRF, we'll swap that over to GraphQL. So we're going to the index first then. Now, I am going to basically copy this across multiple pages. Now in the next implementation, uh, we will move, maneuver that all into a nice space. But for now, just to keep it nice and simple, all the code's gonna be on every single page. So we are duplicating, of course, that's never a good idea, but this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna duplicate code on each page and it gives us a, a practice of working with it, right? So we get familiarized with it. So, uh, right, so what we're going to need? Well, we're going to need category information, right? So what we don't want to do potentially is to have to type in um, the, the actual name of something. So we could potentially just remove this and we could potentially st still use category by name. That's potentially uh, one way we could kind of maneuver and utilize that. But we're just going to build a new uh, query here essentially uh, and resolve so and that's just going to resolve the category so just to speed things up um, I've already pre-written it so I'm just going to call this all categories um, there we go and then I'll create a a simple resolve for this so this is just going to be similar to what we had before when we've got the um, all products etc let's just uh, build one down here so you can see this time what I've done is category objects and I've run a filter and I'm filtering out level one. So like I described earlier here, level one, this is level zero, this is level one. So on this level, I'm going to extract out clothes and shoes from my categories and then display them right here. So that's what I'm doing there. And that's what, excuse me, that's what um, this resolve is going to provide me. Now it needs to be tabbed across. Okay, so that's pretty much resolve. So it's, go, it's called all categories. So let's just uh, test this out first. I'll just refresh this. And then all categories. So all categories. And then pretty much I just want the, I think it's the name, isn't it? Yeah, the name. So that's pretty much all I'm going to need. And there we go, I've got clothes and shoes. So if I change the level to zero, it would output, in this case, it would output the name men. If I did uh, level zero and two, it would output boots. So that's how I'd get different levels there from utilizing MPTT in my categories. Right. Apologies for flicking in between things, but here I'm back now in my index page. And next, I'm now going to remove this, this category here. I'm in the index page. Let's get rid of these. In the index page, get rid of that. And now I need to build up a new request. So like I said, I'm just doing this manually for now. Um, so let's just go ahead and do this. So I'm assuming you're getting familiar with this now. So let's just go ahead and do this. So we're going to create a new uh, query here and we're going to pass this into categories. Uh, so as a query, so we use a GQL to create our category. So we're going to query categories. Uh, we're going to call it category. Sorry, that's just an arbitrary name, arbitrary name. Remember, <clears throat> so all categories, ID, name, slug. And that's pretty much it. There we go. So that's the, the query. So down the bottom here, we want to now pass it in. So just let's, let's pass that data in. 
so that's going to be categories dot data so categories dot data dot all categories so that just drills down to the data excuse me so that just drills down to the data and all categories um cool so remember now that that gets passed into uh here categories and then that gets passed into the header so you may have not seen this before so we've got the header in the component so this data is being passed down the drain to the header so that's a new component so now we can go over to the the header component and you can see that that get passed over um, as data and then it does its stuff in here so i'm not too sure if there's too much we need to change here we're just using the name and the slug so category name and category slug we are mapping it across so data.map category name so let's just give it a go see if it works looks like it works fine there we go so that's pretty much it so all i need to do now is i say all all I need to do now is uh, replicate. So just this, um, obviously I've already pre-built this. Uh, you can see that, apologies, the, the data gets passed in here as data. It's referred to here, so data equals that. So what I'm doing is I'm passing that into this function here. And then I'm just basically, like I've done before, just looping out the data here. So data mapping this. For each item I refer to it as category and I output the name and the slug. That's what's happening there. It's all kind of been pre-built so have a look at the code right so the index is done so let's open up the uh, the slug category of the product let's go in here next so we can probably uh, more or less just copy this across and we we'll get rid of the, the existing element there so we're now bringing categories and then at the bottom here we just copy this out go into the slug in the product and then just print it out there so that's pretty much all we need to do at that point, I think. Um, let's give that a go. Okay. That doesn't look like it's working. All right, let's, let's have a look. So this is um, this is in the in the product. So let's go back to our page. So this is the home page. Okay. So now we're having a problem. Now we're receiving a problem. So see now we need to go back. Um, so I'm just going to go back on the slug there. Hmm. Okay, now I've got to close the slug. Um, so I'm just going to return back into the index because it looks like it's now not working. It's decided not to work. Um, so let's just uh, refresh, rebuild. Okay, so we definitely, we definitely have an error. It's because we didn't check this page, this particular page, um, last time. Right. So uh, let's just double check our our query. So we've got name. Let's just run our query first because we didn't actually test it out. So let's give this a go. I'm going to copy that in to there. Yep, there. Okay, so you can see that potentially that isn't working. So we've got slug here uh, for some reason. So let me just remove that and save that. So that seems to be working okay. So let's go back into our query here. So it looks like we don't have slug. That looks like maybe the, the issue here because we've not asked for slug. So let's refresh that. And there we go. So that was the problem there. It's because we're asking for a piece of data that we're, actually, we're not actually sending forward to um, for our query to actually utilize. So we could obviously change that by going into Django here. Um, so we're back into our schema. Up the top here you can see that in our category we're not passing in slug and that's why we're not able to retrieve it so back into next uh we can now go ahead and copy across so index um category slug let's get rid of this item here let's bring in our our code 
and then at the bottom here let's just pass it into category so we just copy that across okay so that's the the product page so let's go into the products page by clicking on the product oh, it's undefined apologies so there, there is a problem here actually i just noticed and um, we're getting undefined but when we um when we click on the products and we go into one you can see that it looks like it's okay so we did have an undefined there um that's interesting maybe there was just a you know refresh okay so you can see that it's working now on that page the the menu system so as you might imagine the last step is going to be going into the uh we're in the category one at the moment aren't we so the last step we'll be going into the product changing the categories there and then just copying across the category stuff over here so like I said, we move this into a separate place. We're, we'll be able to run queries from a separate page, for example. So we put all the queries uh, in a separate page uh, and then we call them as and when we need them. So that's where we go with this. So there's no need to for obviously for us to duplicate this. But for now, I just wanted to go to this, what I call stage two of doing this. So you can clearly see now I've got two different, um, I've got two different queries now here. So. You may be asking yourself, well, why didn't I call this, for example, categories? So why didn't I do something like this? Obviously, I couldn't call it data. So why didn't I do that? Um, so this is on the product page. So let's go to the product page and have a look, see what happens. And there's that one there. It's from that page. It seems to be an issue. Yeah, OK. So. It's on the shoe page. I just need to change the slugs. There's no slugs on that page, but uh, what page were we looking at? Uh, the product page, wasn't it? Yeah. There we go. So it doesn't quite work um, in that way. So the, the problem is here. If I if I don't have if I do it this way, then I'd be referring to the data down here as data again, and of course that um, causes a kind of a mismatch. So. Yeah, this is why I've, I've utilized this type of approach. Just for now, really, um, like I said, we'll we'll move this into a separate file. Uh, so this is, has a, a different variable and kind of set up, if you're wondering, to this type of approach here, where essentially I'm just putting it straight into data rather than just using a variable name and then going into data. So just a slightly different setup, and I'm extracting that data out from kind of the baseline here where the data kind of resides. Um, right, so the last thing, let's just fix this last point so when I go into my categories when you can see that um, I, I seem to have issues here with linking so it says category undefined bizarrely and um, so we're not actually we don't seem to be getting the detail or the information that we need here and uh, this seems to be the problems or undefined um, so we're not finding you can see down the bottom here it says we I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, it's, it's referring to as undefined. So these links aren't actually working at the moment. So it's good. The code seems to be okay. It's not crashing. So suggesting that we just simply can't find the data as we as we believe or how we think we should. So let's go into our header here and let's let's do a console here. So let's have a look to see what how the data is actually being prepared so that we can potentially see oh cool what happened there console.log so we can actually see what data has been passed across so i think it's referred to as data yep okay so let's um console log that let's see if we can do that so i'll refresh and you can see i've got an array inside of this array i've got um the id in close but notice what i'm not doing and what i needed and what i said before is i'm not passing over this slug so i need that so let's go into my Django schema. Let's add slug now to um, our category. And that's obviously the link that I'm building. That's the name of the link that I'm building. So with that in place, I can now go into my um, query again. I just need to add to this the slug. 
and this is the thing isn't it with copying code across i now need to go to every single one rather than just um, changing one item and this is a, a good example why you should not work like this but it's good practice for now uh, so we've got the slug now so let's go back into our pages hopefully that then gives us the link yep it's all working now so that takes me to shoes and there we go so what we have now is we have a fully uh, implemented GraphQL I say fully implemented we have a GraphQL setup um, of what we originally did in Django DRF everything seems to be working we've got a home page we've got individual pages so you can click on those individual pages don't forget the image just needs scaling up um, so for like that for example uh, that's just the actual image rather than anything out that's the actual image size it's just incorrect so that's all working we've got individual pages we've then got categories that are automatically generated and then the categories inside it so we can have a look at categories of and all the products inside the categories good okay so i do hope that was useful that's nexus nexus sorry that's nextjs with graphql e-commerce store build one so as we go along with this build when we get to certain stages uh, it's probably going to be harder for us to just move across so we'll probably end up having to do the whole thing particularly for example accounts that would probably be a probably a whole separate tutorial uh, rather than just building upon what we do in the next.js drf because we're going to be using code totally different uh, technologies to to make accounts etc potentially but i'm going to try and find a medium here because what i want to do is utilize django sessions to initially to create accounts and manage accounts etc and that's going to provide us a bit of a happy medium so that we can easily potentially flick between graph and drf but like i said hopefully that was useful there's a lot going on there and um you may have lots of problems uh, with this one most definitely so yeah please ask but generally it's just going to be a case of a, a typo error somewhere or you've not quite yeah the typo so going into the template and mapping things out understanding the data and the data structures and what you're dealing with so using that console log really helps out to kind of see what data it is you're working with that's really helpful hopefully this tutorial was helpful in general and hopefully i'll see you in the next tutorial